Good morning, this is Grade 11 Electrostatics. As you can see, Electrostatics would not be complete without a cat picture. So let's go and have a look at what's in Electrostatics. The first thing I have to tell you is this topic and Newton's Laws of Motion. Yes, I teach you in Grade 11, but it's actually in your matric exam. So we're not going to do anything about this in Grade 12. So what you have to do now is understand it now, solve the problems now, don't throw away your notes, and realize that next year it'll come in the trial exam and we're probably going to have no time other than maybe one lesson to go over it again so please make sure you understand it now because if you understand it now you'll be fine the other thing is this topic um, works on vectors so you need to understand the vector issues behind this because if you can't do vectors you're going to struggle with some of the problems so let's go have a look at last year's work and what's new this year so last year, in grade 10, we learned this um, to find the charge on two objects which touch, and it belongs to this law, the principle of conservation of charge. The net charge in an isolated system remains constant during any physical process. So if you've got two charged objects, and they've each got their separate charge, and you touch them, the moral of the story is the charge likes to be shared. And once the two objects have touched, they will come away with equal charge. But the total amount of charge stays the same. So this is basically the charge averages out. If you've got 15 charged objects, then 15 charged objects touch simultaneously, the charge will all even out. So this is the formula that you get on the formula sheet. But every once in a while you see a question where they'll touch three objects simultaneously. And then you can work out the charge on an object by Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, that's supposed to be Q3, over 3, okay? Watch out, they do sometimes um, have two, three objects, and then they touch two, and then they touch one of the two to a third one. That's different than this situation where three objects are touching simultaneously, because the first two objects share their charge, and then one of them shares it with a third. So that's different, okay? So watch out for those two situations, but this is fairly, um, it doesn't come up often, but this is the most likely aspect of it. Then there was that guy Millikan who ran that um, oil drop experiment and he found out that every charge in the universe consists of integer multiples of the electron charge. So the charge on an electron is negative. So this is the charge on the electron. You'll find it on your data sheet. And the amount of charge on your object, big Q, is equal to an integer okay multiplied by the charge of an electron so everything can be worked out how many electrons there are in it based on um, the fact that every charge in the universe is inter integer multiple integer multiples of the electron charge remember charge is measured in coulombs so here are the values here okay charge on an electron minus 1,6 times 10 to the 19 coulombs this looks like the grade 10 data sheet because the grade 11 data sheet has got another um, constant on it. But remember that this is where you'll find the charge on an electron. And here is a sample calculation. How many electrons were transferred if an object has a charge of 7,5 times 10 to the negative 9? That's your big Q. The little Q comes from the charge on an electron. Sometimes they call this little E or Q sub E and then you just do algebra. It's really, really easy. But if you don't end up with a whole number here, say you end up with a fraction, a negative exponent, you've done something wrong because you can't get um, a fraction of an electron. So let's go have a look at what's in grade 11. And I can finally say to you, you know my favorite thing, like charges, repel, okay? So the basis of all electrostatics is charges divided into positive and negative charges. Only electrons can move. So if you have a positive charge, there is a shortage of electrons. And if you have a negative charge, there is an excess of electrons. So we like to look at these little pictures where a neutral object has the same number of positive charges as negative charges, and that a negatively charged object has um, more negative charges than positive charges because it's gained electrons and this one that's positive has got more pluses than minuses because it's lost electrons. Please also always bear in mind that whether you're positively charged or negatively charged, 
the charge is relating to the excess or the minus of electrons. There are still millions and millions and millions of other electrons on the object that can move when objects touch and stuff. And that's how the charge changes. Even if you're positively charged, yes, you're missing some electrons. But remember, all matter is composed of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So there's still millions more electrons beyond the ones that have already gone missing. So you need to bear that in mind for when um, you share charge. So there are three main ways of charging objects, friction, contact, and induction. So he has my little dude walking on the carpet and he's leaving behind electrons on the carpet. And then he becomes positively charged. And as he touches the door, which was neutral, the electrons flow off the door into his hand and zzzt, he gets a shock. Okay. So here is charging by contact. This object is charged, the van der Graaff generator. And then if you touch the object, you and the object share your electrons until all the strands of your hair have the same charge, like charges repel, and you end up with this lovely vision of contact charging. And electrostatic induction is when you bring a charged object near an object that is neutral, or it can even be charged, and all the electrons are either repelled or attracted to the object without it even touching. So this um, po portion of the object gets one charge and the other portion gets another charge. So this is charging by induction. Only the electrons will move. So either if this is positively charged, the electrons are attracted this side. If this is negatively charged, the electrons will be chased away to the other side. But this object is neutral still until you touch it to something else. So uh, these charges exert a force, which we measure in newtons, okay, and they're called electrostatic charges, sometimes Coulomb charges. Opposite charges attract, like charges repel, and if you are neutral, there is no attraction or repulsion. And this dude Coulomb, who lived from 1736 to 1806, that's who we name the unit of charge from. So the unit of charge is the Coulomb, which is a big C, and we use Q big Q or little Q, which is the electron charge, but usually we use Q for charge. And this charge symbol goes into electricity. It's in electricity and in electrostatics because it's just this Coulomb is kind of like the mole. It's the number of charges, um, the amount of charge on a certain number of electrons. Okay, let's go into this in the next video.